hello what's up youtube photographer running sweet and i try and this is going to be a complete skin retouching tutorial for beginners out there and if i told you a beginner or if i told you i've been using photoshop for a while but you don't know or you don't understand skin retouching from the very start to the very end this is a tutorial for you and in this tutorial i'm going to be showing you every single detail that regards skin retouching and every single bit that you have been struggling with regarding skin retouching or frequency separation in general so without further ado let's get started and you can see a quick before and after for basically this very image so that's the before and the after before and after so i'm just going to delete what i've retouched for this image and first of all go through what we want to do in this very tutorial so in this lesson or in this class we're going to be understanding frequency separation from the very start to the very end and also doing a little bit of mixer brush tool settings the lasso tool method for frequency separation the eye whitening color grading and also some little bit of dodging and binding in photoshop so first of all we are going to be doing skin retouching using frequency separation and with frequency separation basically we divide the photo into two parts so one part is going to be containing the high frequency layer and the other part is going to be containing the low frequency layer in the high frequency layer basically we have our textures and in the low frequency layer basically we have our colors in the image so by coming to the background layer and making sure it is a locked layer just come and press ctrl j or command j twice and create those two layers that i've just talked about right now so just make sure it is selected and simply press ctrl j twice or you can use command j for mac so just press that twice or you can as well drag and drop here twice just once and drag and drop here the second time then after doing that you're going to name this to low and you're going to name this to high so like i said in the low frequency layer we have colors and in the high frequency layer we have our textures so that is what we want to remain with in these respectful layers so i'm just going to come to our low frequency layer and now select it and now come and hide the high frequency layer then you're going to come right here to our filter then you come to blend come to gush and blur remember in this low frequency layer, on one to remain with the colors meaning the low frequency layer is going to be having only colors and the high frequency layer is going to be having only our textures so we are basically going to come to our gaussian blur window right here and take the radius all the way down so this is the most important step when it comes to retouching or frequency separation in general so if at all you mess up with this step it means the edited image may not be having the right amount of skin details or skin texture so you have to take maximum attention or pay maximum attention to this first step so you have these tools that is the zoom out and the zoom in hand right here so by clicking on that and clicking and moving around you can notice or you can hover around and navigate through the area that has prominent textures so by that i mean when you look for that area that has those prominent details or skin textures in the image and you start taking up the radius for the Gaussian blur it means that the Gaussian blur is going to be eliminating the textures from that area that has the details so like i said simply left click on this radius handle and hold down and start dragging it up and as you can see it is just starting to take away the textures or the details from this image so you have to stop at the point when the textures or the details are just starting to disappear from your image so depending on the image that you're working on you have to stop at the point when you're just starting to lose out on those details meaning the details you lose out on this step are going to be recovered back in the high frequency layer but you always have to stop your radius slider up to a point when these textures are just starting to disappear from the image so you shouldn't cramp my radius because your images may be having less or more details and 
meaning the radius may be dynamic and it may really change or vary from image to image so i'm just going to come and click ok and in this way it is going to apply the gaussian blur onto the image so when it is done applying the gaussian blur on the image the image is going to lose out on the details or the textures and it may look a little bit blurry so we are going to come to the high frequency layer right now and now select it by left clicking on it and simply left clicking on the visibility icon to bring back the details or the textures so in this step we just want to remain with the textures and no colors in the high frequency layer and in order to do that what we want to consider or take into consideration is the bit depth of your image usually we have 8 bit and 16 bit images and in order to know the bit depth of your image you have to come to right here to image and you come to mode and you can see the checked option is going to be the bit channel or the bit depth of your image or you can as well look at this area right here and you can set i have 16 meaning my image is a 16 bit image then if at all you have 8 it means that your image is going to be an 8 bit image so my image is an, a 16 bit image so after selecting the high frequency layer we're just going to basically come to our image right here just come to image and you come and select apply image so when you come to apply image you're going to get this other window open in your photoshop so what we want to do basically we're going to come to the layer and make sure remember we are extracting our textures from the low frequency layer so just come and select the low frequency layer and make sure the channel is rgb so like i said if at all you are having 16 meaning the image is going to be 16 bit the blend mode just come and change it from multiply and change it all from whichever blend mode that may be appearing in your photoshop change it to add if at all you're having a 16 bit image the opacity is going to be 100 percent preserve transparency and mask cannot check the scale has to be 2 and offset 0 let me repeat this for a 16 bit image the blend mode has to be add or pass at 100 percent make sure preserve transparency and mask are not checked and make sure the scale is 2 and offset 0 and make sure the invert option is not turned on so if at all you're working with a 16 bit image so in order to get back the information or only the textures just come and make sure the channel is rgb after selecting the low frequency layer because we are extracting the textures from the low frequency layer. make sure you select the low frequency layer the channel has rgb and make sure the blend mode is add or pass at 100 percent preserve transparency and mask and check the scale is trend offset so and make sure you turn on the invert option so this is for a 16-bit image then if at all you are working with an 8-bit image you can see when we turned on the invert option for a 16-bit image it took away the colors from the image so if at all you're having eight right here this is what you have to take into consideration so select the low frequency layer and your channel has to be rgb and make sure the invert option is not turned on the blend mode this time around is going to be subtract or pass at 100 percent preserve transparency and mask cannot check the scale is 2 and offset 128 and make sure the preview option option is turned on and you can see that our textures are on the gray kind of layer and now this layer is lacking colors meaning we have successfully extracted out the colors from the high frequency layer and you can come and click ok but for my case i have a 16 bit image meaning my blend mode has to be add and i have to turn on the invert option with the scale of 20 offset 0 and i'm just going to come and click ok so we want a blend mode that is going to reveal back the image or the original image so just come to the blend mode and change it from normal and you can change it to linear light and you get back the image the way it was meant to be so we want to do a confirmation of whether we have successfully divided the frequencies of this very image so i'm just going to come and by left clicking and clicking on both layers you have selected both 
layers after pressing Ctrl or Command. And you can drag these two layers into this group icon. Or you can as well press Ctrl G on the keyboard. Then if at all you're using Mac, you can use Command G on the keyboard after selecting both layers. And you can double click to rename that to Frequency Separation. So when you turn this on and off, you can see that there is no difference between our original image. So even if I turn off the original image, you can see that this group that contains our divided frequencies is going to be basically the same image as the background image. So meaning we have successfully divided the frequencies of this very image. So right now what we want to do, we are basically going to come to our frequency separation group and click that drop down arrow and open up the frequency separation group so right now before you want to retouch you have to ensure or understand that when you're doing skin retouching basically we just want to deal with the colors separately and the textures separately so that when we have fine-tuned the colors in the image or the skin tones and also fine-tune the textures when we combine both fine-tuned layers, we have to come up with a nicely retouched image. So that is what we want to do in this case. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to come to the low frequency layer. And I'm going to come and turn off this. So just come and turn off the high frequency layer. The reason for this is because as we are working in, with the colors, Sometimes we tend to get distracted by the skin details or the textures. That is why I've decided to hide the high frequency layer. So when you're retouching basically using frequency separation, we have tools that, that really enable us to blend the transitions within the skin tones or the skin color of the image. And one of those tools, we have the Mr. Brush tool and the other is the Lasso tool. So we're going to be using both tools for this tutorial so that we can come up with a nicely retouched image. So right now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to come to the low frequency layer. And when it is selected, come under the brushes. So if at all you're using older versions of Photoshop, you may find your mixer brush tool right here. But if at all you right click on the brushes option, you are going to find it in the brushes section for newer versions of Photoshop. I'm using Photoshop 2024 this very tutorial. So just come and simply select the Mr. Brush tool and right above here we have the settings. So after se selecting any tool within Photoshop, the settings for that tool are always going to be on this top part of your Photoshop. So we want to set up the Mr. Brush tool so that it can even and blend out the transitions within the skin color and harmonize the transitions so what i'm going to do, i'm just going to come and go through these settings so always make sure you have selected the hardness of zero by clicking on the drop down icon right here and make sure you have selected clean brush then you have two options right here one is load the brush after each and every stroke then the second one is clean the brush after each and every stroke so we want to select the one that is going to be cleaning the brush automatically because as we're working on the skin area we are dealing with varying colors or various colors that are going to be differing from one point of the skin to another remember the way light is falling on the image usually creates a varying contrast within the skin tone in specific areas so we are going to be using a weight of nine percent the load of seven five percent so load is 75%, the mix of 90 and the flow of 100%. Then also make sure sample all layers is not checked because when you click on sample all, all layers, it means that the brush is going to be sampling information from also the textures and painting them back to the low frequency layer, which we don't want. So make sure sample all, all layers is not checked. So after doing this, we are going to start evening out the transitions within the skin tone or the skin of the model. So how to effectively use the Mr. Brush tool? If at all your Mr. Brush tool is showing a plus icon like this, make sure you press the caps lock key 
the nipper tool you want to play around with different sizes of your missile brush tool you can use the open and close brackets on the keyboard and that is going to enable you reduce or increase on the size of the missile brush tool but as you're working on the image using the missile brush tool always make sure that you play around with different sizes depending on the area that you're trying to work on and next as you're using a missile brush tool you don't have to zoom all the way in because when you do this you're going to you're not going to be seeing the uneven skin tone transitions within the image and you're going to be having more work to do so always retouch at a reasonable distance so with that said you're going to start applying the missile brush tool and how to use the missile brush tool you simply left click and hold down and make sure it is a reasonable size so you left click and hold down so you left click you don't right click but simply left click and hold down and start moving your missile brush tool so you have to move it in the direction of how a given area is shaped you can see how it is moving in this kind of direction so you have to take your missile brush tool in this kind of direction so that you keep and maintain the original shape uh, in the model's face so that is how you have to move your missile brush tool and you can see right now as you're using the missile brush tool it is turning to look a little bit plastic but you don't have to mind or worry so much about it looking a little bit more on the plastic side or you don't have to mind about it looking like an oil painting because the more it is looking like an oil painting the better the results at the end of the process so you're just going to be doing this for the rest of the areas so you can see you have to basically mix areas that are looking alike so for example this area has this nice highlight so i'm just going to come and mix that area that has this nice highlight and make sure it is blending well or even better so you have to mix colors that are looking alike and that are close to each other and where they're transitioning from one area to another just come and mix that border or that boundary and that is going to create a harmony between those colors and make the skin look better or seamless you can see on this area this area is moving this kind of triangular movement or shape so i'm just going to take my missile brush tool in that kind of direction so when it comes to the nose area it is moving from an up down kind of movement so i'll take my strokes in that kind of direction to keep or even maintain the original shape of the model's face so i'm just going to be doing this onto all the areas that have skin and i'll have to forward this and i'll see you later on in this very tutorial what's up youtube and now you can see i'm done blending the transitions within the skin and you can see the before and the after so far so right now there are areas that we may have missed out when you're using the mr brush tool to blend the transitions within the skin tones or skin color so in order to fine tune that that is where the second technique for using the lasso tool comes in so just come and get the lasso tool so this is the lasso tool right here and make sure it is in new selection mode right here because we want to keep on deselecting every single time we click out from a given selection of the lasso tool and now come and make sure the feather is 22 pixels and make sure ant alias is selected and select and mask is also active right here so with the low frequency layer now selected you have to come back and turn on the texture layer so after doing this just come and make a shape so you also have to follow the facial structure and make that shape the way the face is shaped in that area so just come back to filter and come to blend come down to gaussian blur so remember this area that we had initially for our frequency separation or when we are separating the frequencies of this very image so just going to come to the radius and start taking it up 
up to a point when we have or when we feel like we are having a very nice skin texture for our image so at around 21 that is fine then the other trick that i can share with you always multiply the radius that you had when you separating the frequencies of the image and multiply that radius by 3 and just type in the value so 7 by 3 is 21 so i'll just type in 2 1 right there and you can see that we have the same result so i'm just going to be applying this so to deselect from a selection just click out from it and it's going to automatically deselect that selection or you can as well right click on the selection and come to deselect but when it is in new selection mode as soon as you click out from the selection it is going to be deselected so i'm just going to be making these shapes and applying my gaussian blur in those various areas that i want to fine tune all the areas that i may have missed out when i was using the mixer brush tool to even out the transitions within the skin of our model so when it comes to the nose area i'm just going to come make sure you select the edges first so don't select the whole nose at a single time because that is going to make the nose look flat and it's going to make it look a little bit bigger so only apply the lasso tool on only the edges of the nose and don't apply it in the middle area because you want to retain the original shape of the nose so right now we are done using our lasso tool to fine tune so this is the before and after for our skin retouching process so right now after blending the transitions within the skin color remember we have been working with skin tones or skin color so we want to deal with the textures or the skin imperfections in the texture so just come and select the high frequency layer and come and get the clone stamp tool or you can use s on the keyboard that is the shortcut for the clone stamp tool so for the hardness i'm going to be using hardness of zero percent with the opacity and the flow of 100 percent make sure align is checked right here and make sure the sample is currently because you only want to deal with the information in the texture area that is the high frequency and make sure the sample is current layer so after doing this you can now zoom in by using ctrl plus or command plus on the keyboard so keep on pressing ctrl and you can use command plus up to a point when the image is zoomed in so we want to remove the skin imperfections or the blemishes within the image so how to do this or how the clone stamp tool works with the high frequency layer selected we're just going to come to our bracket keys and make sure that the clone stamp tool size is slightly bigger than the blemish that we want to remove so make sure that the caps lock key is not turned on and now to reduce or increase on the size of the clone stamp tool you can use the open and close buckets on the keyboard so we are going to be copying clean skin from an area that is close to the blemish and replacing that cl clean skin over the blemish so that the blemish can be eliminated so in order to do that hold down the option option key if at all you're using mac and simply left click on an area to copy that clean skin on that area that is next to the blemish and release the out the option key if at all using mac then if at all using windows simply hold on the alternate key on the keyboard and left click to copy clean skin that is close to the blemish and simply release the alternate or option key on the keyboard and left click over the blemish and that is going to clean up or remove that blemish from that area and it is going to replace it uh, with an area that has clean skin so basically that is how to clean up skin using the clone stamp tool so i'm just going to be removing these blemishes and i'll see you uh, later on in this very tutorial hello what's up youtube and now you can see i'm done removing the blemishes from the model skin and this is the before and after for the skin retouching process so right now what we want to do just want to do a little bit of eye whitening and for the eye whitening process what i tend to do i just come to the adjustments and come and select you and saturation 
So basically what I do, I slightly desaturate the image up to when I feel like the eyes are now looking better and natural when it comes to the white area. And I stop at that point. So make sure it is in master mode and make sure you take the saturation of the master down until the image is now looking a little bit desaturated. And with this white layer mask selected, simply press Ctrl or Command I on the keyboard. So Ctrl I for uh, Windows and you can use Command I for Mac to invert the effect. Remember in Photoshop, black is going to hide and white is going to reveal. So just come to the brushes and right click and get the brush tool and make sure the hardness is zero percent and make sure you have black and white right here so you can switch between black and white by using x on the keyboard or you can use this arrow key so if at all you have any other different color you can reset by using or clicking on these two tiny black and white boxes and that is going to reset it to black and white so make sure the white box is on top by using x on the keyboard and you can now zoom in and using the white brush we're going to be revealing that what was hidden behind the black mask so reduce on the size by using the open and close brackets on the keyboard and you can use ctrl or command plus on the keyboard to zoom in and be precise and paint into the white area only paint on what should be white within the eyes and just like that we are done doing our eye eye whitening on this very model so the next thing that we want to do let's do a little bit of dodging and burning remember dodging and burning is more of enhancing the highlights and the shadows within the image and for that we're going to be using the curves adjustment layer and the brush tool and for the eye whitening i used opacity of 100 percent and flow of 100 percent so i'm just going to come to the curves adjustment layer so dodging and burning is more of enhancing the highlights and the shadows within the image. So I'm just going to make a midpoint right here and slightly brighten up the image. So you click in the, in the middle of this line in the curves and brighten it up. And with that done, just come and close this and press Ctrl or Command I with this white layer, layer mask selected. Press Ctrl or Command I on the keyboard and you're now going to double click click right there and you're going to name that into dodge so remember we just brighten the image and you're going to do the same for the dark areas by coming back to curves and simply clicking in the middle and dragging it down and you're going to close this and with this selected press ctrl i or command i on the keyboard and you're going to name that to burn so after doing this i'm going to put this to in a group and press ctrl command g on the keyboard to group this and you're going to double click to rename that to dodge and burn so we're going to open up the dodge and burn group and you're going to select the burn remember burn is for the shadows and dodge is for the highlights of the image so this helps us to create shape or dimension to the image so with that done just come and select the brush tool and for settings make sure it is a soft round brush and the hardness is zero the mode is no more opacity this time around is going to be at around 10 percent and the flow of 100 percent so make sure you have white on top right here so you can increase on the size of the brushes by using the open and close brackets on the keyboard and with that you're just going to be painting in the shadow area just like that so just make strokes meaning the white brush is going to be revealing what was hidden behind this black mask so just paint in the shadow areas with the burn layer mask selected so remember we are now burning and burning is for the shadow areas of the image so just going to do that and burn just like that you can also come and do a little bit of burning on the forehead area so when you're done doing that you can see before and after for the burning and now the model has that nice shape and dimension so you're going to do the same for the dodging and dodging is for highlights so just come and enhance the highlights of the image and i'm just going to enhance right there and you can also enhance the lip area and right on the nose area so when you feel like the dodging and burning is too much you can come and turn down the opacity of the dodge or the 
ban player mask or you can as well turn down the overall opacity for the whole group for the dodging and burning so this is the before and after for the dodging and burning and now the image has that nice shape and dimension so after editing or retouching we want to save a very sharp and detailed image so in order to do this simply come to file and come to export and come to export as so if at all you have always saved images that have changed in color when you post on social media or when you print them out this is the best way to save your photos when it comes to photoshop so you're going to up have the export as window right here and make sure the format is jpeg and the quality is 100 percent so make sure you choose the format as jpeg and the quality all the way to 100 percent so remember we want a slightly sharp image from Photoshop. So make sure the resample is by cubic sharper and make sure you select the color space. So color space is more of the colors you want be embedded within the image. So color space, make sure you have checked convert sRGB and also you have checked option that says embed color profile. So what this is going to do, it is going to embed every single color that you applied when you're trying to process your image within Photoshop and usually sRGB is going to be supported by more social media and websites so after you have done all that just come and simply click on export and choose where you want to save the image so basically this is it for this tutorial and if at all you have learned something you don't forget to like this video and don't forget to subscribe this channel if at all you have been watching and you're not subscribed yet to this channel Ronix from Ronix Photography. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next. More amazing tutorials. And don't forget to keep practicing and also keep creating.